word that was based on his vocabulary. You know, notice what the reverend said. He said, we plan, but God is planning. I love that. I love that. You can't find that word in the dictionary. It was in Rev's own dictionary, but it made a whole lot of sense. Uh, we were planning to be here this morning uh, on the outside, hopefully as a drive-in service, but yeah, God has, has given us a display, if you will, right. in terms of our own uh, way of doing things. But we're here nonetheless to yeah. worship God in the spirit of holiness and the spirit of beauty. Brother Edward is getting ready to lead us now in the reading of the scriptures and also in the, a word of prayer. Uh, the band is here, and uh, yeah, yeah. We, we really don't have nothing laid out. To be honest, our plans have all changed. And so we're gonna we're gonna just give God the praise and the glory that He deserves. So join in with us as we praise the Lord. One oh three. And it said, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefit, who forgiveth all thy iniquity, who heal all thy diseases, who redeem thy life from destruction, who crown thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfy thy youth with the good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses and unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. I read uh, eight verses out of the just mentioned scripture. The Lord had blessed the reading, hewing, uh, and doing of his holy word. Let us go to God in prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. O God, we come to you at this time in the name of Jesus Christ, saying thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for this time, God. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for this Sunday morning, O God, that did have been set aside for the sense to get together and worship and praise your holy name. So we're here this morning, oh God, calling upon you because you're the only one, God, that we can depend on. We're trusting in you with all our heart. We're not leaning on our own understanding. All of our ways, Lord, we want to acknowledge you because you said you would direct our path. Bless us this morning, oh God. Let it not let our coming be in vain, I pray. We're here, God, this morning at the Good Shepherd Church, thanking you for Pastor Skinner. Thank you for all the members, all of our preachers, oh God. Oh God, bless us this morning. Let it be, let us be what you would have us to be. God, we know you've been good to us, oh God. You've been mighty kind to us. You're a gracious God. There is none like you, God. We know that you was able to do all things. You created the whole universe. We come saying thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, God. In the midst of our pandemic we are having, oh God, let us continue to worship and praise your name, God, because you are so worthy, God. Thank you for our family this morning. Yeah. Thank you for everybody that's doing your will. Bless your sense. Everywhere, God, all over the land and country, people that are calling upon your name, God, because you're able to hear and answer our prayer. Have mercy upon us right now. Thank you, God, for those, oh God, that's in leadership, oh God. Let them make the right decision, I pray. Guide their mind, guide their heart, oh God. Let them say what you once said. Let them read your word, oh God. You told us what we needed to do, oh God. Have mercy, Lord Jesus. Again, I pray for our pastors, our preachers everywhere, God. We're trying to let the world know there's a reality in serving the true and the living God. Because God, you is good to us, oh God. Thank you for technology, oh God. We still can call upon your name. And the world can still hear what you have to say. Oh, have mercy right now, God. We love you, Lord. We love you so much, God. Reading why we love you, God, because you first yeah. love us. And you prove it to us, God, by giving your only begotten son to come and die in this world, oh God. And, and he give up his life that we may have right to the tree of life. Oh God, he was hung, my father. He bled and died, but he rose again early that morning. 
We thank you right now, God. We praise your most wonderful name. You are so worthy to be praised, oh God. It's all about you, God, and not about us. Oh, bless us, every family, oh God. Oh, let us continue to trust in you in the midst of everything else. Oh, have mercy, God. Let us love one another the way you told us to love, oh God. And the only way the difference is going to come if we have that love that you told us to have, to love one another just as you love the church, I pray. Oh, have mercy, Lord Jesus. All power is in your most wonderful name. Oh, have mercy, God. Bless us again tonight. Today, God, whatever we do, God, that you get the glory out of our life. Thank you, Lord, for the Good Shepherd Church. We've been on this corner, God, for 61 years. Oh, have mercy, God. We had some good, we had some bad. But, Lord, the good outweighs the bad because you're in control. Oh, have mercy, God. Thank you for the founder. Thank you for those that passed them before Pastor Skinner. Bless him in a special way, God. Thank you for Pastor Skinner. Let him continue, God, to trust in your most wonderful name. Let him continue to call upon you, God. Yeah. Be concerned about the sheep, oh God. Oh, have mercy right now. Let us be in touch with everybody, I pray. We love you, God. We praise you, God. We magnify your most wonderful name. Yes, we love you so much, God. We ask it all in Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Amen. I've had some hill to climb. I've had some weary days and some lonely nights. But when I when I look around and I think things over. All of my good days outweigh my bad days. I, I, I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low. 
I can hardly see the road. So I ask the question, Lord, Lord, why so much pain? But He knows what's best for me. Although my weary eyes they can't see. So I just say, thank you, Lord. I, I, I won't complain. You know why? Because God has been good to me. He's been very good to me. More than this whole but you could ever be he been so good to me yeah he drives all of my tears away and he turned my midnights into day so I I just tell him thank you Lord I want I won't complain. I don't know about you, y'all, but God been good to me. He's been very good to me. Oh, than this whole world, or you could ever be. He's been so good. Yes, he's been so good. He been so good to me. He lied all of my tears away. Yes, he did. And he turned my midnights into day. So I just got to tell him, I just got to tell him, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For the hardness, I thank you, Lord. For the trials, I thank you, Lord. For the good, I thank you, Lord. For you said in your word, in everything you thank you. Thank you, Lord. I won't. I won't. I won't complain. Yeah, yeah. It's Come good, on, I give tell God a hand praise. Come on, it's all right. Give God a hand praise. He is so worthy, even right now. Our God is worthy. We got a lot, a lot that's going on in our world. There's a lot that we, we would think that we've got to complain about. But the reality is if we woke up this morning, that's enough to say I don't have anything to complain about. The yeah. fact that I got activities of my limb says I don't have really anything to complain about. The fact that my mind is still on Jesus says I don't have anything to complain about because God has truly been good to every one of us. Shall we bow for a moment and go to God in prayer? Our Father and our God, how we love you again and thank you so much for being the great and true and awesome God that you are. Thank you, Father, for loving folk like us. Because we have to admit we haven't done everything that you said we should do. We haven't said all that we should have said. We sometimes should have not said some things that we did say. Our thoughts have always, always been pure and holy and righteous and Christ-like. So, God, we ask that you would forgive us those times in life that we choose to act independent of you and forget that we are Christians. We forget that we've been born again. We forget that we are filled with your Holy Spirit. But God, we thank you for today that reminds us that we've got another chance. And that is another chance to worship you, another chance to praise you, another chance to be able to fellowship with our brothers and our sisters, another chance to experience life, the sun, the moon, the stars, 
another chance to experience water, another chance to experience air. God, thank you so much for the privilege of life that you have granted us. And so right now, Lord, we want to lift up our friends, our relatives, and people that some we don't even know that are going through seasons of difficulty. God, I pray for those families that are in bereavement right now, those that are grieving the loss of loved ones that have been sick, those that have been diseased, those that have been involved in accidents, those that have been involved in crimes. We pray for those families, God, and ask for comfort as only you can give. And then, Lord, again, we do pray again for those who uh, are suffering through ruptures in relationships, there's some bad relationships that are going on, the, whether it's between parents and children, husbands and wives, brothers and sisters, co-workers amongst themselves, even amongst church members. God, we pray that relationships that have been ruptured would be repaired. Help us to know again that you've given us that ability to do that very thing. And then, Lord, again, for those who are sick, you know our own prayer concerns, our friends, our brothers that are going through their seasons of difficulty, sickness, and disease. God, we know that you got healing power. We know that you can do all things, and we know that whatever you do is always well done. And so we would ask in Jesus' name, and you would provide healing, God, that you would provide comfort, uh, that you would make whole, that you would make well. Nevertheless, Lord, we've got enough sense to know we can't command you to do it, but we know how to ask you. And we ask you in Jesus' name, and you would grant it, Lord, not according to our demand, nor our command, but the simply meaning because of your desire, your will to do it. So we entrust everyone to you, all of our family, all of our friends, and even our foes, God. We pray again for our nation, and we ask that you continue to allow the church to rise up in a nation that is without God, a nation that is without Christ. Help us to stand. Help us to, to demand the, the, the reality of Jesus Christ. Help us to share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Help us to do those things that ultimately bring praise and glory and honor to you. God, we ask that you would be with us now as we share your word. Thank you again for allowing Good Shepherd to exist for 61 years as a church. Thank you again for what you did in the life of Pastor Johnson and the life of Pastor Wilson and all of us who were under their administration, those who serve under them, with them, alongside them. God, we ask that you will continue to help us be the church that you would have us to be. It's in Christ's name we pray and his name alone we pray it. And all who agree it said, amen, amen, amen. I want to invite your attention for the moment that we have today. The book of 2 Kings. <coughs> Good Shepherd, you would be aware of 2 Kings. M many of you, your Bibles just went to it automatically because you all are following the reading. I have no doubt y'all following the reading. And so this, this, this particular day, we are reading 2 Kings chapter 6. And as God led, reading through the, uh, the passage, uh, God gave some insight as to where we are as a nation, where we are as the people of God, right there in 2 Kings chapter 6. And the sense of that passage, it will pick up, we will see it at verse number uh, 13 to 14, just for our context and the title of our text today is The Other Side of What Shall We Do? The Other Side of What Shall We Do? Beginning at verse 13 of 2 Kings chapter 6. Again, I know you've already been reading it, so y'all already there. So he said, go and see where he is that I may sin and get him. And it was told him, saying, surely he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there. And they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? 
So he answered, do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. I love that, y'all. I love that. This is the word of God. You all may be seated. You may be seated wherever you are. Most, if not all, human beings have asked this question. What are we going to do? What, what shall we do? That, that question, when you think about it, has been asked in both delightful and difficult circumstances. From a delightful standpoint, an average child could wake up in the morning and uh, um, uh, ask the question, what, what are we going to do today? What shall we do today? Where are we going today? That's, that's, that's a, a, a delightful side of it. There's a uh, many times we're asking ourselves, what are we going to eat today? Uh, many times that this could just be the, uh, the situation of, of uh, someone meeting someone else and, and trying to decide whether we're going to go with this person or that person. And we just simply ask that question from a delightful standpoint. What shall we do? What are we going to do? But also, that same question, it can have an intensity that can literally change to the point that you can ask the same question, but it's in a difficult circumstance. Uh, in other words, in other words, in other words, I never, I never shall forget uh, 2001 when, when Tropical Storm Allison came through. And I never shall forget Stefan and I was standing in the middle of that kitchen and watching the water roll into the house. And Jam looked at me and said, Daddy, what are we going to do? That was a more difficult situation same question but the level of intensity has been raised in the reality so now when we look at that question what we look at from a standpoint of difficult situations that happen it's those situations that cause us to ask what shall we do and of course right now the pandemic has caused some of us to ask the question Ken, what shall we do yeah, the problem that we have in our economics that people who have lost jobs and there are businesses that are literally running out and they're asking the question, what shall we do? There are families right now that are literally going through a situation of seeing a family member roll away from them in a gurney or a hospital bed, in some cases never to see them alive again. And those families are asking, what shall we do? There are some parents that are contemplating right now, wondering, because you've heard the word last week or they declared that school is going to open at its regular time, but you've got these alternatives, these three opportunities or these three decisions that you have to make as a parent as it relates to your child going back to school and mothers and fathers are having that discussion, guardians are having that discussion, grandparents are having that discussion and they're asking, what shall we do? I can only imagine the the, the language that's going on in the Texas Medical Center right now as the, the ICU beds are filling up because, again, of COVID-19 patients that are getting sicker by the moment, sicker every day. People are dying. I can literally imagine in my mind that they're asking that question, folk, what shall we do? The good news is, is that when we go to the word of God, we can see that God has something to say about the other side of what shall we do. Because the reality for us that the Bible never promised any of us that we would be exempt from problems. It never promised us that we would be exempt from pain. It never promised us, God never promised us that we would be exempt from disease and sickness and illness. As a matter of fact, Jesus says, in this life, you will have tribulation in this world. You will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Why? For I have overcome the world. 
And so the reality for us, uh, uh, James would say to us, count it all joy when you go through various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith will produce endurance. But let endurance have its perfect way so that you might be complete and entire, lacking nothing. So the reality for us, and I would, I would venture to say, I would venture to say that, that those who have preached who have preached a prosperity gospel, those who have preached that you should never get sick, you should never ever uh, 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 be lacking in anything, how now are having to test whether or not that is a reality because our whole world in some way, somehow, is facing the reality that problems are part of the life of a human being. So the question now is, the, what do we do? The other side of what shall we do? Look, when we look at this particular text that is before us, the history of Second Kings, if you want to know that, it would span uh, a, a time of over 400 years as it relates to biblical history. After Solomon's death, uh, the Bible would, would help us to understand that the nation of Israel had become divided. It was divided between that of Israel to the north and Judah to the south. Ten tribes to the north represented Israel. Two tribes to the south, that of Judah and Benjamin represented the south. As a result of that, those who were in Israel actually existed in the promised land for 209 years after the death of Solomon. Those, again, who were in the south, Judah and Benjamin, they existed until they were exiled from the promised land 345 years after the death of Solomon. And, of course, those of you who have already read, when you read 1 Kings and you read uh, uh, 2 Kings, you discovered how, why were they a divided kingdom. The Bible reminded us that Solomon loved women. And as a result of his love for women, they caused the, his heart to be divided from God. The Bible talks about Solomon having 700 wives and 300 concubines. And the reason that he had all of those wives is that they were actually peace offerings from the nations that lived around them. The Bible would talk about the fact that the, the Pharaoh actually gave him his daughter, which would symbolize that he wanted peace with Solomon and Israel to the point that a peace offering of a woman would be a demonstration of the fact, I don't want to fight you, man, because if I fight you, that literally means that I would be causing my daughter that I love to be killed in war. But it is an establishment, and because of the fact that he had all of those wives, they caused his heart to be taken away from God. And God declared that as a result of his divided heart, that when he died, he would, he would leave a divided kingdom. And so now, during those years of, of that division, all of the kings to the north were evil. None of them were good. None of them were righteous. None of them did any good. None of them did the right thing. You had a few kings in the south that did the right thing from time to time. But for the most part, these kings were evil. And now we look at one of the cases of a king, not necessarily of Israel, but a king of Syria that, again, was coming against against the king of Israel. You can pick that up at verse number 8. The Bible says, Now the king of Syria was making war against Israel. And he consulted with his servants, saying, My camp will be in such such place. And a man of God said to the king of Israel, saying, Beware that you do not pass this place, for the Syrians are coming down there. I'm just kind of paraphrasing. Here it is. The king of Syria has decided that he wants to war against the king of Israel. But God would give a word to Elijah that would basically, he would send to the king of Israel. And he say, listen, don't y'all go down here. Don't y'all go down there. Be careful about going here. Be careful about going there. Because Syria is about to come down. And every time they did it, God used the man of God to give the king of Israel a warning not to do what he was planning to do. 
course, the king got a little upset about it because Assyria couldn't understand. He said, hey, man, what, who is the mole? Where do we have someone who is leaking what we're doing in the palace? Who is telling what's going on? On and somebody had to remind me. Said, "No, no, no, no. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody here telling it. There's a man of God by the name of Elijah in Israel, and God tell him everything that he needs to know, and he's telling where they're going before they get there. And so that king decided, the king of Syria, he decided. I'm paraphrasing the story now. He decided to send an army to find Elisha." The Bible says that they get there, and when they get there, they surround Elisha's house. They surround the city where Elisha was living. And the Bible says that Elijah's servant, who had been sleeping all night, I want y'all just kind of get that picture in your mind. He's been sleeping all night, and he gets up in the morning, and he walks outside. He stretches, he yawns. <gasps> And when he opens his eyes, he sees an army of chariots and soldiers all around him. Come on, some of y'all are acting like, oh, that could happen. No, you don't see that happen every day. Here it is. There's, a, there's an army. He went to bed at night. Things were one way, and he got up in the morning, and things were another way. He went to bed one night and things were one way and he got up in the morning and things were another way. I'm going to say it again. He went to bed one night and things were one way and he got up in the morning and things were another way. I know I got some witnesses out there that can testify. Say, yeah, Reverend, I went to bed one night and things were one way. When I got up in the morning, everything was another way. Yeah, I went to school one day and when I got out of school that afternoon, things were a total different way. Yeah, I went to work yesterday morning, and by the time 5 o'clock rolled around, it was a total another thing. I went to bed last night one way, but when I got up this morning, things were a total different thing. Well, that brings us to where we are. The Bible says that he sees the army around him. But notice what happens now. When he does, the word of God says that Elisha prayed. And Elisha prayed. And when Elisha prayed, he said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see what you are doing. The word says that when he opened his eyes, although he saw the army that was surrounding his city, he also saw the Lord's army that was surrounding the army that was surrounding his city. Somebody ought to give God a hand praise right now. You almost got the message already, but before I end, it's just a couple of things I want to share with you is that when we look the fact that there's the other side of what shall we do, we got to recognize that there are times in life that we're going to be surrounded by adversity. We're going to be surrounded by adversity. We're going to be surrounded by some problems. We're going to be surrounded by some medical issues. We're going to be surrounded by some relationship issues. We're going to be surrounded by some money issues. We're going to be surrounded by circumstances that we did not ask for, that we did not pray for, that we did not beckon for. But the reality is that sometimes in life, you don't have to ask for things. God simply allows them to happen. Come here, Job. Job was a perfect man, one who loved God, and the Bible says he eschewed evil, and the word says that one day the sons of God came to present themselves, and Satan came also, and God said, yeah. All right. have you considered my servant? <laughs> so there are situations in life that every now and then we're going to be surrounded by some adverse circumstances. Can anybody, anybody that's listening right now, can you just wave your hand? I know I can't see you, but can't you just wave your hand to attest to the fact that I'm surrounded, guess what, right now, this pandemic, this, this, this invisible enemy that we cannot see. I don't know about you all, but sometimes I feel like I'm surrounded by adversity. <laughs> But here, here's, here's another thing. When we're surrounded by adversity, when you look at Solomon or, or look at Eliza's servant, you can have a sense of anxiety. Mm -hmm. When you're surrounded by adversity, you can have a sense of anxiety. 
And I know there's some super people out there who don't get nervous about nothing. You always chilling about everything. You calm about everything. But let me tell you something. All of us got some stuff in life that can shake us up. All of us go through some things in life that can literally shake us to the core of our being. I'm, I'm one of those persons I believe, man, trouble happened to me and, and it's like, Lord, bring it on. It's good. I'm going to work it out. But oh, when things happen to Shug, things happen to Jam, happen to Tanisha, happen to Corey, oh my goodness. I got to watch myself. I got to collect myself because I have a sense of anxiety. Is there anybody, anybody feeling what I'm saying? Have you ever had those moments where you just kind of feel just a little nervous about some stuff? You feel just a little bit anxious about some things? You're uncertain about the job. You're uncertain about the relationship. The money is funny. The change is strange. And all of those things are going on. That that's just surrounded by adversity and you got a sense of anxiety. And I know what, I know what the spiritual folk are telling me right now. But Bible, Bible says Say, Lord, be anxious for nothing. I know that's what he said, but guess what? I got to be reminded every now and then that I'm not to be anxious for nothing because I got to admit there are some times I get anxious. And so here it is, this servant, you look at verse 15. He says, he asked the question. His servant said to him, alas, my master, what shall we do? Have you ever been there that you asked the question? What shall we do? What are we going to do now that we are facing this adversity? Now that we are experiencing this anxiety? I'm glad you asked. Here's the answer. We have to seek the Lord's answer. Yeah. That's it. We got to seek the Lord's answer. Look at verse 16. It says, so he answered, do not fear for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Do not fear. So he's telling us, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Chill. Chill, chill, calm down. Listen, there's no doubt about it when the adversity comes and when the anxiety does arise, it doesn't mean that it's not going to come. The issue is, do we go and seek the Lord for the answer? Do we go to the word of God for the answer? And I need to encourage somebody. I, said, I think I said it early on. Good shepherd, but I just want to encourage you. Don't spend the day looking at CNN. Don't spend the day looking at Fox News. Do not spend the day on your phone searching and following COVID-19. That stuff will mess up your mind. That will just get you all discombobulated. It will make you anxious. It will cause you to be worried. But I guarantee you, if you seek the word of God, notice what he says. He, 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 asked, the, he asked Elijah, the man of God. He asked the one who believed in God. He, be, he asked the one who was trusting in God. He asked the one who was relying on God. And when I look at what's going on in our nation right now, the reality is there's only one entity in the world that's really got the answer, and that is the people of God. So, yes, you may hear the White House. You may, may hear the State House. You may hear from City Hall, but you got to hear the word of God. He says the Lord has the answer. So what does he tell us? He says, first of all, do not fear. Because notice, notice the language that he is using does not make any sense to that servant at that moment. What you mean don't fear? Elijah, what, is, what you talking about? Do not fear. Reverend Elijah, prophet Elijah, master Elijah. What, what, what you mean? There's an army surrounding us. There's an army all around us. What do you mean? Do not fear. But here's the, here's the reality. When you go to the word of God, there are things that God say in his word sometimes, y'all, from a human perspective, it just don't make sense. Can I get a witness in here? No matter what the situation is, he's telling us trust in the Lord. No matter how difficult things may be, he is telling us he can supply your need. There are things that he says in his word that when we're having our anxious moments, they may not make sense. But the Bible is saying that here it is, this servant actually went to the one that had the answer. Yeah. 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 Verse 17 says, and Elijah prayed. 
and said, and that's it, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. <laughs> that's the answer, y'all. That No matter what we're going through right now, that's the answer. He says that we have to seek the Lord's answer. Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. In other words, what he was saying, I want him to go beyond looking in the natural. I want him to go beyond looking in the physical. I want him to go looking beyond what he is actually seeing. But Lord, help him to see what he needs to see. Why? Because he's connected to me. He is, he is connected to God. He is connected to the Lord. He is a servant of God. And so therefore there are things that God has equipped him to see that others cannot see. And that's what we got to recognize as the people of God. There are things that God has equipped us to see that the world cannot see. But we have to seek the Lord for the answer. Yeah, yeah. So if you're not spending time in your word, please spend time in your word. If you're not reading the scriptures that, that we've been assigning to, for us to read together, make sure you read it somewhere in the scripture because the answer for the anxiety, the answer for the adversity is in the word of God. Here's the final thing and we're done. Watch this. He says we have to see the almighty. We got to see the almighty. Notice again, it says verse 17. Then the Lord opened his eyes. He opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. Woo! I like that, y'all. Now, remember, remember, his eyes were already opening. His eyes were already open. He was seeing the army. He was seeing the physical horses. He was seeing the physical chariots. He saw the, the swords. He saw the spears. He, he saw everything that he needed to see that would demonstrate to him, man, you in trouble. Man, you are not going to get out of this situation. Have you ever felt like that? You, you are in trouble. It's all over for you. But notice what happens. And here's the answer from the Almighty. Behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. I, I like that, y'all. I like that. I like that. I like that. Because, because, because what, I'm, what I'm seeing here, what it's saying is that, is that no matter where he looked, Elisha was surrounded by what God had provided. Ooh -wee. Ooh -wee. I don't know about y'all. I like the fact. I like the fact that God would say, you just need to see. Don't see what others are saying they're seeing. See what I'm telling you to see. Because when you see what I would have you to see, what you think you saw will not override what you see. Why? Because the power that I'm giving you to see me is greater than any power over anything else that you may see. Can I get a witness in here? So God wants us to look beyond the problem. Look beyond what's really right here. Look beyond what's going on in our nation and to recognize that our God is still on his throne. He saw that Elisha was surrounded. Yeah, 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 I'm, uh, I'm, uh, 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 I'm, I'm closing. There's a, there's a little cartoon that used to come on. Some of y'all can remember Tom and Jerry. How many of y'all remember Tom and Jerry? Remember Tom and Jerry? And that was this little, that was this little dog, I think Butch was his name. Little dog would every now and then would taste, would chase Tom and Jerry, or a particular taste, chase and Tom. And Tom, 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 the Tom cat, Tom would get that little dog in a corner and he would terrify the little, the little dog. Would, and the, but the little dog steady barking, the little dog steady barking, steady barking, steady barking, steady barking. He barking, he barking, he barking, he barking, he barking. Because the little dog was convinced what another Tom could do to him. And then, and then they would show a scene that here it is, Tom all of a sudden is terrified. He's scared to death at what he is seeing, but why was he terrified? Little old bitty dog, Tom is a big Tom cat. Little old bitty dog, rah, 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 rah. little dog can't do nothing to him. But Tom now is terrified, and then the, the camera would pan over, and it would show the little dog's daddy. Mm-hmm. Little dog's daddy was standing behind that little dog that was barking. But Tom now is seeing 
what the little dog, if you would, couldn't see. The little dog thought it was him. But when he would look beyond, Tom would look beyond the little dog, he, all he saw was the big daddy ready to come to his rescue. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. The God that we serve, even though we're surrounded by adversity, even though every now and then we get a sense of anxiety, we got to be convinced that when we go to God for the answer, we are still got a God that can handle every situation. He can handle every circumstance. He knows what to do no matter what is called upon him to do. And I know what somebody is saying. Hey man, that coronavirus, that thing is killing folk and people are dying and that is a sad reality. But remember, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, when you look beyond where you are on planet earth and to remember the promises that God has made you, that he even if you die on this side, God say, I done took care of that problem also. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He says that in one day, he's going to give you a better situation, a better circumstance. So all I'm saying, no matter what we're seeing right now in our nation, that nation don't have the last word. It doesn't matter what we're seeing in our city, what we're hearing in our city. Our city don't have the last word. We got to see beyond our problem and see the God that can handle every problem. I praise God today that God will give us the answer that we need even in the midst of the adversity that we see because that's what's on the other side. I thank God that there is another side to what shall we do? What shall we do? We will seek God for the answer and then we will see what the Almighty does. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's what we do on the other side of what shall we do. Our Father and our God, how we thank you, how we honor you, how we bless you, and how we praise you for your goodness, for your kindness, and for your generosity toward us. You have proven again that you are God who is good. You have proven again that you can enable your children to see beyond what we see and to see what you would have us to see that when we see the only thing we do is that we see you that you're still almighty we still see that you're still ever present we still see that you still are everywhere at the same time you still got all the power you still know everything and we still see that you are still sovereignly ruling and reigning so father Thank you for knowing that there is an answer to what shall we do because there is another side. So I pray again that you continue to imprint that upon our heart, impress it upon our hearts, that right now we know in our county, in our city, we are getting some bad news, some difficult news, but Lord, help us to see what you're doing in the midst of it all. Help us to see that you still wake us up every morning that you made the hospital. Help me to see that you gave the doctors the knowledge. Help me to see that you still got the last word, even in ICU. Because there are people that, that are listening even right now, people that, that, that are in our world right now who went through the trauma, who went through the most difficult situation of life, but you brought them through. And so, God, we are convinced that you still can bring us through. But if you choose not to deliver us on this side, we know you still got the power to get us up in that great getting up moment. So, Lord, in the words of the elders, say all night and all day, the angels kept watch over me, my Lord. And so we're convinced, Lord, that those that are for us are greater than those who would be against us. So we give you the honor, we give you the glory, and we give you the praise. Speak to hearts now. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Perhaps there is someone today who has not trusted in Jesus as your Savior. This is your opportunity. You still can trust him. Uh, all you've got to do is believe that he gave his son to die for your sins. He allowed his son to be buried in a grave. And he raised his son up on the third day with all power and all authority. The scripture says, if you believe that, you shall be saved. And you may be asking the question, saved from what? Saved from the penalty of sin, which is death. 
the evidence again that sin is a reality is that people are still dying. But God has given us a word of hope. God has given us a word of promise. God has given us a word of confidence and a word of assurance that we now know what to do because there is the other side of what shall we do. So if you have a, if you trusted in him today, maybe you sit next to someone, maybe you know someone, maybe someone asked you to listen to this broadcast on this morning. And now you can talk to that person. They can explain to you the fullness of what it means to know Jesus Christ as that personal Savior. If that is not the case, you can always call our church. The phone number is 713-672-9847. 713-672-9847. And we will be glad to minister to you, to serve you. We will get back with you as soon as we possibly can. You can check our website. It again gives us information as it relates to emailing us and the like. If you want to do that, please uh, take advantage of that opportunity. Our prayer is that God will continue to bless you and that you too will come to faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It's offering time, folk. It's offering time. I'm asking that wherever you are, however you do it, by way of of uh, online giving, some of you again are giving by way of the uh, uh, having the deacon to pick it up for you, whatever that may be, however you do it. Uh, again, good shepherd, I say it this way. I am convinced that God is blessing you all. Uh, the evidence that we see on a weekly basis is evident that you are trusting that if you give sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. But if you give bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. And I know that you all are. The evidence is there. Trust God. Trust God with the way that you give. And God will see to it that you will always have something to give every time there is the opportunity to give. Father, thank you now for the giver and for the gift. We will use it, Lord, for the ongoing of your kingdom for the magnifying of your name and for the edifying of your church. For we pray it all in Jesus' name and his name alone. Amen, 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 amen. I want to just do this right now just by way of announcements. And I'm going to ask everybody, just hold on for just a moment. Remember, this is our anniversary day. And I just, just a couple of people I do want to, a couple of things we want to do before we, uh, before we end this service on today. Uh, happy anniversary again, Good Shepherd, 61st anniversary. We got two, two birthdays for this week. Uh, major clap, if you would, for Reed Faltry, Lois Anderson. Happy birthday, Reed, and happy birthday, Lois. And then four years, uh, happy anniversary, marriage anniversary for Marcus and Alexis Dixon. Love you, Lexi. Uh, congratulations, congratulations, Marcus, on four years of being married. I do want to do this before we leave today uh, to... Uh, Still thank God again that even though we're not able to celebrate our anniversary as we normally would traditionally last year, if y'all can remember at this time, uh, we were here, uh, a major crowd, Wayne was here and uh, had a major video presentation that we were doing, recognizing the 60th year. But this year starts the first, I, I said century early on and I was wrong, another decade if you would, of ministry for us. This is year 61, so it's starting a new decade, and we look forward to what God is going to do in and through us uh, in that new decade. Uh, still, Sister Jerry Bailey still is the oldest member of on the roll uh, as far as uh, joining in the early 60s of our church. We praise God for Sister Philomena Thomas, who has the uh, distinction, again, of being our oldest member, our oldest lady, uh, if you will, 92 years old. Uh, Brother Feldman Ardwan is the distinction, again, of being the oldest man of our congregation and, and also a, just a wonderful servant. Uh, he's part of that group of the ushers that, uh, oh, these people love to serve the Lord. And so, ushers, thank you all for your contribution in serving uh, the members of this congregation every Sunday, the way that you do it to help us 
uh, to be comfortable as we possibly can. And we thank you again for your ongoing service to this congregation. It is always, always, always appreciated. I want to thank God for our teachers. We have about 20 teachers of our church as far as from a Christian education standpoint. We have the responsibility of teaching our, our, uh, our, our congregation, uh, male and female, about 20 of you all. Thank you all so much. You know who you are. Those, again, from Noah's Ark. Uh, all the way to those who every now and then get a chance to teach our Silver Saints. And having said that, Miss E, thank you so much uh, for what you've done for our babies and how you have served them. And also, also Sister Diana Johnson, uh, for what you've done for our Silver Saints uh, in serving them. So from our babies all the way our Silver Saints, thank you all so much for your continued service uh, to the Good Shepherd family because it takes all of us. It really does. It takes all of us uh, to make that happen. I certainly want to do this. A shout out to Sister Valesta Phipps again for her service. Um, uh, Sister Phipps has been a member here, I guess, about 1963, 1964, and continues to serve. And we thank God so much for her, along with the other group, with the ushers, and in particular, in her case, uh, the nurses, along with uh, Sister Lois Anderson. And we're very grateful to you all for your service. Of course, we thank God for our choirs, those of you who, are, who, who sing in all of the choirs and the like that we have, male chorus, all of the groups that sing. Thank you so much. Uh, the fearless girls that we have, MOC, Sister Love, all of our various ministries of our church, thank you so much uh, for what you do. The, uh, the do sets, the odd ones for what you do in our food pantry of helping the members of our congregation for Charlene and that gang of women that you have that love to serve with Donna and Sonia and Nell and uh, 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 good gracious, I know there's somebody else I'm thinking about. Thinking about, thinking about. There's one more. You got to help. Alberta, Alberta, Alberta. Thank you so much for your continued service uh, in that area. And Michael, thank you for coming alongside with them. Uh, Mac Bledsoe shows up in helping to serve that food. Thank you so much again for your continued, uh, continued service. For all of the things that you do, we are so grateful to God. And of course, we know without our 18 deacons, the functioning and structure of this church would not be what it is. So right where you are, just give our deacons a hand of appreciation. Thank y'all fellas so much for your service. Uh, our lead deacon is here today, Brother Edward, and all the rest of you guys who serve. We got three guys that are on trial right now. Um, man, with this COVID-19, we probably going to have to just kind of forget about what we traditionally do is just tell them, hey, y'all some deacons, man, because y'all y'all, y'all are serving in some tough times right now. Uh, Leroy, and Le uh, uh, Leroy, Oscar, and Michael. Thank y'all so much, man. So we probably just going to have to just make y'all some deacons and just talk about a, a service a little bit later on because you guys are, are really stepping it up. And so deacons, thank you all for what you're doing, the way that you're doing it, and we are so appreciative for everything that you guys are doing. Of course, our band, thank God for the band. All of them are here today. Uh, uh, we thank God again for Ken on our drums, for Damon, the bass guitar, for Judy on, we're, we're saying, the keyboard, Warren on the organ, our minister of music. Thank y'all so much for your continued service. 61 years, and so we are so grateful and thankful just, for, just to be able to do the things that we do. Now, I got to do this one more thing before we close. Uh, Zach and, 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 and Stefan, I need you guys to come up here. Just come on up here. Come on, fast. Y'all move fast. Y'all move fast. I need you guys to move fast, as fast as y'all can. Listen, since the fourth Sunday in March, since the fourth Sunday in March, I think I'm saying it right, the fourth Sunday in March, uh, Without y'all come, y'all come right there on, on either side. Without the efforts of these two giants, without the efforts of these two giants, uh, we would get this done, but it would not be as easy as it, as it has been. So, so Zach, man, thank you so much. Uh, Stefan, thank you so much, man. We appreciate uh, y'all effort. And 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 right now, uh, Zach is Zach really he's over the media ministry, but. Um, but he kind of serving like a deacon around here right now. You know, right after this service is going to be done, he sprays down everything. I mean, everything. When I say everything, everything, you better be careful. He'll spray you down if you're not careful. 
He just believed in getting it done, and we are so appreciative for it. So I just, again, wanted to recognize them for that service. Guys, thank you all so much. Thank you so much. To everybody else, again, thank you for your continued service uh, to the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, next, next week, we are going to go back to, I guess, a more... Uh, regular schedule as far as our Sunday school is concerned. Next next week, the ladies are actually going to be uh, doing uh, a live streaming as far as Facebook is concerned for the uh, 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 after for Sunday school. Our men will do the conference call, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make some things a little bit more robust, getting some things a little bit more excellent. And folk, stay safe, please, please stay safe. I'm saying it to our young people. Uh, please do your part, not only to help yourself, but to help your parents, help your grandparents, uh, help your, your older aunts and uncles, uh, because we do have, we have a member of our church. Um, again, n name, name, name will not be mentioned at all. Uh, and we have a family that is going through that season right now. And, and for, for the most part, they can't really determine what has happened. I mean, it's all the way from a, from a mother to a grandbaby uh, that have been, been infected, if you would, uh, with the virus. So we're going to continue praying for our families, trusting that God will do what he's been doing to show us that he is a great and awesome God who's worthy of all the praise. Shall we stand as we get ready to make our exit for today? Don't forget, there's a video of the service that we're doing right now that's going to be on shortly on, uh, on uh, I guess YouTube. And then what are we going to do about the, uh, the video for the, uh, the church anniversary? What time are you going to do that? 10.30, the video for the church anniversary is going to be available. So I'm hoping most of you took advantage of it. Make sure you watch it. It's just a way of us celebrating as best we can, uh, allowing us to come together as a church uh, to be able to celebrate our 61st church anniversary. Many of you got the video, told you what to do, how to video yourself to get it done. So I pray and trust. Uh, that most of you have been able to uh, respond. Father, how we love you and thank you so much just for this opportunity once again to praise you in this way. We pray, God, that as we move forward, you would help us to know that there is going to be, we're going to be surrounded by adversity. Uh, we're going to have a sense of anxiety. But in the midst of it all, Lord, we pray that you would help us to seek the Lord's answer. And then when we get that answer, Lord, to see you, the Almighty, do what you do, and that is be God. Help us to trust you even through the pandemic. Help us to trust you even through the problems of our economy. Help us to trust you even in the midst of the protests. Help us to trust you in the daily issues that we have to deal with. To the end, Lord, that we would always recognize that there is, there is, there is no doubt about it. You help us on the other side of what shall we do. And we thank you for it. We bless you for it. We honor you with it. In Jesus' name we pray. And all who agree said amen, amen, amen. Until we meet again, God bless each and every one of you all night, all day. Angels keep a watching over us. And we thank you, Lord.